Greetings, my fellow pen friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Pen Habit. And today we're doing an ink review. Now, I don't do a lot of ink reviews, largely because they are probably my least favorite kind of review to do. Ink is very difficult for me to review for a couple of reasons. One, the experience of the ink and how the ink works is so subjective and is so dependent upon the paper that you use and the pens that you have it in. And also people's perception of color is very different. And so it's, it, I find it very difficult to come up with any sort of value in this other than just show you how the ink works on the paper. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, and this, I'm going to follow the same format as a lot of my other ink reviews in the past, but uh, just, it's just, you know, one of those things about ink reviews that I always find very difficult is how do you create value in doing the ink reviews on something that can change and be so drastically different depending on the situation that you find the ink in. But any, in any case, the ink for today uh, has been provided by Exaclair. Now, Exaclair is the U.S. distributor for J. Urban and Rhodia and Claire Fontaine and a lot of those brands. And they sent me this bottle of J. Urban 1670 Karub de Chypre. Now, the 1670 line of J. Urban inks is kind of their high-end line. It comes in these beautiful uh, cubicle glass bottles with wax on the screw-on cap and a little wax seal with the gold thread around the neck of the bottle. These bottles are not great, and I've talked about this before in other reviews. These are very, very difficult to fill from. They are the the opening is very narrow on the top of the bottle here. So if you have a large nibbed pen, sometimes I find it easier to just decant some of the ink out of the bottle and put it in a sample vial because I can fi- I find I can fill easier from that than I can from the bottle in many cases. I love the look of the bottle though. It's This is one of those bottles where it looks great, but it's not particularly functional. So that is one little minor complaint about the, this, this line of ink. Now, the 1670 inks come out usually once a year. They make an adjustment. There, the first one was Rouge Hematite. Then there was Blue Ocean. Then, oh uh, goodness, I think the next one was Stormy Gray. Then last year in 2015, the big ink was, oh my gosh, why can't I remember the name? Emerald of Shavor. There we go. There we go, Matt. It's late in the day and my brain has gone to bed. The Emerald of Shavor. Now, Emerald of Shavor is still one of my favorite inks. I love that ink a lot. It's a teal ink with amazing red and almost green sheen to it. And then gold particulates on top of that. The ink for 2016 was Karub de Chypre. Now, Karub de Chypre is uh, a chocolate colored brown ink with gold uh, particular, gold glitter. I, I call them glitter inks. That's probably not the best terminology, but that's just what I, I call them. So uh, this is, I, I had a bottle of this already, and then uh, J. Urban, or Exaclair, excuse me, sent over another bottle. So I will be giving this away as part of a prize package in a future episode or in a future giveaway. So just keep an eye out for that as well. But let's dive into the ink. So what I'll do is I will write with a few pens, then I'll show you the written reviews, maybe replay the chromatography that played under the opening credits, and we will go from there. So let's get started. You know what? Actually, before we get started, let me just take a quick moment to talk about my methodology here. Um, so, and, and, per, and some of the problems with this particular ink. Now, inks in general, in my mind, shouldn't be left in a pen for more than a couple of weeks at a time. Every time I do a review, though, I try to leave the inks in pens a little bit longer than I normally would just to see how they behave. In the case of this review, I didn't want to do that because of the particulate in the ink. And anytime you're using a particulate heavy ink, you do need to be careful about letting the ink dry out in the pen. Because what happens is you get some of the particulate in the feed channels, the water dries, you know, the water evaporates from the ink and it can clog the channels. It's not a permanent thing. Usually with a lot of these inks, both the the J. Urban and the Shimmertastic, if you flush some water through the feeds, it will clean right out. So normally I wouldn't leave ink in pens like this. I did, however, with these pens, not intentionally, but because I... I'd ink them up to get ready to record the review, and then I ended up not recording the review for a couple weeks longer than I expected. 
So before I write with these pens, I went through and I just kind of reprimed the feed and cleaned off the nibs a little bit just to give you a sense of what it's like when you first ink the pen. Another thing to call out with these kinds of inks is that you need to be careful, not careful, but if you want to get the effect of that that shimmer and that pearlescence in the ink, you need to make sure that you are agitating the ink inside the converter or inside the barrel of the pen before you start to write. So a good example of this, I'll show you this pen here. This is my uh, diamond, or excuse me, the Twisby VAC 700. I'm going to flip this over very quickly and you may see it for a little while, but on the bottom side, here's all of that gold and it's just settled to the lowest point of the pen. So before I write with this pen, I generally try to shake it up and get the gold reincorporated back into the ink. Otherwise, it won't it won't come through the feed quite as easily because it's all condensed down at the lowest point of the pen. So that's just something else to be aware of with these kind of shimmer inks that you need to make sure to re-agitate the ink. I will be doing that as well. So when I prime the feeds and clean off the, the nibs just to get it back to how it would be if I had just inked it up, I will also be re-agitating the ink and reincorporating that, that gold particulate back into the ink. So now here we go. Okay, the first pen is a Jin Hao 599. And this is a fine nib. The next pen is the Lamy Vista. This is a medium nib. Then we go to the Lamy All Star. with a broad nib. Next up is the Twisby VAC 700. This is a 1.5 millimeter stub. Then we have the comes with an FA nib. Come back to that in just a moment. And then finally we will wrap this all up with the big nib. The Pilot Parallels. It's a 3.8 millimeter. All right, so you can see here that if you wanted to get that darker kind of chocolatey color, you, you have to go with a pretty wet or, or one of the broader nibs. The, the fine nib actually comes out almost a tan khaki color here, and then you start to get to brown, but you don't get the really nice rich brown until you get down here to the broads. Now, I will say that the only place I'm really seeing a lot of the gold, and I don't know how well this is going to show up in the video, I'm seeing a fair bit of gold down here on the Pilot Parallels, but it is not, it's not going to be that really crazy, intense gold sparkle. It's, it's, very, it's a very subtle effect, I find, on this particular ink. It's, I actually prefer that. I don't, I don't love those inks where it's just like, you know, knock you over the head with all the glitter and, and, and that sort of thing. So it does, you do get a lot of it when you get this pooling like you do here on the shading for the parallels. It does shade pretty nicely, but it tends to be a little bit more of a gradual shade, except, well, maybe not. I mean, here you're getting more of a a binary shade where it's just like one then the other, one then the other. A little bit of sheening around the edges here, kind of a greenish sheen there. The one thing on the flexible nib is 
This nib has actually been doing pretty well with most inks. It doesn't love this ink. It's the ink runs just a little bit on the dry side and the particulate I think gets in the way of the ink flow. It may also interrupt the surface tension of the ink a little bit. So I'm not sure I would necessarily recommend this as a great flexible ink. I think this is an ink that absolutely shines in flat nibbed calligraphy or if you've got a wet, a wet nib, you know, a wet round nib, that kind of thing. All right, let's go ahead and I'm going to walk you through the writings that I've done and then we'll do a few color comparisons and show you some how some colors stack up here. All right, we will start off first this time with some cheap paper. So this is standard staples 75 GSM bottom of the rung copy paper. You can see here on the color swatches we've got some nice color and there's actually a fair bit of the gold particulate that is visible here. This was done almost a month ago. So what you're seeing there is not wetness from the ink. It's actually the, the gold particulate in the ink. And it's pretty consistent throughout the ink here. You've got the triple passes. So it, you can see some shading and the third pass here gets quite a bit darker. We see kind of a repeat of the same experience from fine, medium, broad, 1.5, the flex, and then the big parallels. When it comes to dry times, this is actually a little long for this paper. Normally, this paper will, the dry times will kind of top out around five seconds. This went up to 10 seconds. So this is just a touch long, but it's not too bad for, for inexpensive paper. In terms of bleed, there is a little bit of bleed, but it's not perhaps as bad as you might think. And really, the most bleed that we saw was here on the flex where you're kind of cutting the paper and a little bit of bleed on the the really wet pilot parallels, which is the same thing I use up here as well. So this actually does pretty well. There's also no feathering, which is great on this kind of paper. So uh, bleed, there's very, there's a little, but not too bad. I like the color. Usually the, because this paper is so absorptive, the color isn't quite as, as vibrant as it is on the other papers. This one actually did a pretty good job of maintaining a lot of its color. The dry times are about moderate, no feathering. Flow is a little less than great, but you'd expect that from a J or Ben ink, which tends to run just a touch dry and that particulate. Lubrication, about the same. Saturation, it's pretty saturated for this paper. Usually on this Staples copy paper, the, the saturation goes down a fair bit. Not a whole lot of shading. You do get some down here, but the rest of the writing, you don't get a lot of shading. There's really no sheen here to speak of, and I'm not counting the, the particulate, the gold, as the sheen. The sheen would be something else entirely. This is, the particulate's kind of its own thing. And then show through is about moderate. Next, we've got rhodia paper. So here you've got a slightly, I'm going to show you side by side here. So the colors are actually pretty close to the same between the Staples copy paper and the Rhodia paper. This is probably just a touch bit more saturated on the Staples copy paper, which is pretty unusual. So here we're not seeing quite as much of the gold particulate, uh, but we are seeing a, a bit more in the way of shading. So we're starting to see shading around here. And again, on the pilot parallels, I misspelled parallels. That's, you know, that's what happens when I'm listening to an audio book while I'm <laughs> writing these out. I, I misspell and I don't want to start all over again. There's no bleed this time. Nice color. Dry times are actually kind of slow for this paper. So it was up to 25 seconds for me. It was almost dry at 20 seconds, but it wasn't quite dry. So 25 is kind of where it topped out for me. There was no feathering. Flow, again, about the same. Lubrication felt a little bit less lubricated on this paper. Saturation's a touch. I have it as a touch higher, but looking side by side, I'm not sure that's actually... I'm not sure I would differentiate them that much. I, I think they're probably about the same. Shading, it's still kind of low on the shading side. I am getting a little bit of sheen. And then on the show through, I am seeing some show through, but it's not, it's not, you know, it wouldn't make the backside of this page unusable. And finally, we come to the Tomoe River sample. So here, you really start to see a lot of the sheen. So there's kind of a, a goldish yellow sheen. There's gold kind of interspersed throughout this whole section. It's not pooled up like it was on the, the Staples paper, but it is, it is throughout. And you can see we're getting a little bit more shading here as well 
than we did on the other two papers. Very light on the 599 on this cream colored paper. I misspelled parallels again. Uh, then we get down to the solvent test. So I was actually surprised that none of, the, none of them actually completely removed all traces of the ink. So the water drip, it took a lot of the color, but it left a fair bit. Same thing with the water rub. Neither the ammonia nor the beach complete bleach, excuse me, bleach, not beach, completely erased the ink. And the bleach left kind of a salmon colored stain behind when it removed everything else. Dry times on Tomoe River were actually pretty good in comparison to the other two papers. 15 seconds is pretty good for Tomoe River. Usually that takes a lot longer to dry and 25 or 30 seconds is, is about average for Tomoe River. To, so to have it dry at 15 seconds was pretty great. And you can see the gold here that kind of pooled up on the Tomoe River where it was wet. It was really nice, the gold showing through here. So no bleed, nice color, good dry times, no feathering, Pretty good flow, a little less lubrication, nice saturation and shading. The sheen was so-so. It's not one of the more sheeny inks that I've ever seen, but it's still it's still nice. And then the show through is we we were getting a little bit of show through, but it's not not too bad. So those are the pre-written samples. I'm going to show you the chromatography again, this time without the overlays that we used in the intro. So you can see how the colors break down. And then when that's done, I'll come back and show you a few color comparisons. So here are a few color comparisons to help you, if you've got other browns in your collection, this should help you give, get a sense of some other browns that you might uh, take a look at for comparison's sake. So here we've got a Graf von Faber-Castell hazelnut brown, which is a little bit lighter and a little bit more kind of orangey color. This Franklin Christoph brown 732 is, if you remove the sparkle, they're not that different in color, but the sparkle lightens this up quite a bit. There is Diamine Chocolate Brown, Pilot Iroshizuku Tsukushi, which actually there's a lot of similarity between those. Here is Monteverde Brown Sugar, Karandash Colors of the Earth Grand Canyon. And let me, while I'm here, I'm, I'm going to try to kill two birds with one stone here. I've had people say, oh, I heard the Karandash inks and the Caveco inks are the same thing. So I happen to have the caramel brown here. So they're close. They're not exactly the same, but they're pretty close. So here's the, the caramel brown from Caveco. Here we have Mont Blanc Irish, or excuse me, Mont Blanc toffee brown, Ackermann Bekacht Hags, Sailor Bung Box Piano Mahogany, which is clearly a lot more red, Sailor Bung Box Kabayaki Eel, Private Reserve Chocolat, and Pilot Iroshizuku Yamaguri. So I will say that the J Urban 1670 is kind of a unique color. If you were to remove the particulate, I have a couple of inks in here that are pretty similar. Uh, I think among those, probably the, oh, let's see. Let's, let's see if we can't find, kind of nail down the closest ones. It's hard to tell without the particulate, but I'm gonna say probably this Private Reserve Chocolat the darker part of Bacocked Hogs would probably be a pretty close match. Sailor Gentle Bung Box Kabayaki Eel. Uh, Mont Blanc Toffee Brown. Yeah, I think those are probably going to be about the closest in color. So if you like the color but you don't want the gold, these would be some colors that you could take a look at. All right. Well, I think that will do it for this review of J. Urban 1670 
Karub de Shipra. So a huge thank you to Exaclair once again for providing this ink for review purposes. I apologize. It took me so long to get to actually recording the review. And as I mentioned, this ink will be included with a giveaway package coming up here in the next little while. So just keep an eye out for the giveaways on Pen Habit, and we will include this in one of those giveaways when it happens. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.